In a previous Kerbal Space Program challenge, I visited every moon in the game in a single mission, but that didn't feel too bad since most moons are clustered together and not very hard to land and take off from. Today, I want to try to visit every single planet in the game in one mission, and just to make it harder, I want to do this using only solid rocket fuel boosters, which have no throttle control and don't stop burning once you turn them on. So this is going to be a huge challenge, and to get started, my first goal was to create a separate rocket rocket that I can use to launch off from each planet before redocking with my main ship. So looking at all the planets here, Jewel is going to be excluded for reasons I'll explain at some point later, and Eve is going to be about a billion times harder than everything else, so I figured I'd give myself an easy starting point here and knock out the launch vehicles for these four planets, starting with Duna. So starting out here, you can see me putting down the command pod, and below that, I'm putting down a pair of docking ports. This is so that I can attach the command pod to different landers to depending on what planet I'm landing on. After that though, you can see me putting down a huge solid rocket fuel booster below that, putting on a nose cone and a few fins. With this simple design here, I wanted to try it on the launch pad, and you can see it's got a pretty decent amount of thrust. And just by eyeballing this, I thought it was going to be a little short of getting into orbit around Kerbin, but since Duna is a thinner atmosphere and quite a bit less gravity, I was hoping that would mean it'd get into a pretty decent orbit here. So now, you can see me cheating myself over to Duna, and I wanted to try giving this a test here. Now really what I'm looking for here is just proof that I can get a solid orbit out of this, and even if I don't make a good orbit here, that's okay. Now what isn't okay though is that I have so much fuel that I've managed to completely escape Duna's sphere of influence. That was not exactly what I was expecting, so I took off this big booster and ended up going with one that's about half the size. And again, by throwing on some fins here, I wanted to give this a test and see if this would be a little bit more appropriate. I definitely didn't mind using a small booster, because anything that I was going to use for these landers, I'm going to have to carry up off a carbon, which is just going to make my life more difficult later. But even this booster you can see is still escaping Duna, so what I decided to do here is put down an engine plate, and this lets me put down three of these smaller boosters. Now these are going to have less fuel, and with three of them all together, I'm going to have a pretty similar amount of thrust. And taking a look here, you can see that while I don't have a perfect orbit, I wasn't escaping Duna, which was really all I was looking for. So I was satisfied enough with that for now. What I wanted to move to next was going to be my Elu lander. The Elu is sort of Pluto's analog, and because of that, it's not terribly difficult to take off from here. In fact, you can see what I'm going with is an extra stability module and a single one of those boosters that I was using before. Pretty much as soon as I take off, you can see me starting to burn horizontally, and while my orbit definitely isn't circular here, it's at least theoretically close to what I wanted, so I felt comfortable with that, and I wanted to move on to the next planet, which is going to be Drez. Now you can see for this, I ended up using a booster that's half the size, but overall it's pretty much the same rocket. The Drez is very similar to Elu, but it just has a lot less mass, and you can see with this, I almost got a solid orbit. And to push it over the edge, what I wanted to do was add on some of these Separatron rockets, which are just these small little rockets that I can use to give myself a little bit more of a bump. So I got myself into a similar position here, warped over to the Apoapsis, and you can see I ended up burning with those small boosters here, and not only did they end up getting me in orbit here, but they actually overshot that, and I accidentally escaped Drez. That wasn't ideal, but I can just use less of these, and I gave this another try here, and you can see that this time, I ended up getting a much more reasonable orbit, and this is something that I can work with. So with that done, the next thing I need to worry about is going to be Moho. Now this is also pretty similar to the last two, it's just another rocky planet with no atmosphere, although it seems to have a little more mass than the last two. So I got pretty close to to get in orbit, but didn't quite get there. So I just once again slapped on some Separatrons here, and trying this out now, you can see that I was able to get myself to actually escape Boho. So of course, I just took a few of these off, and with this, now I have takeoff vehicles for four of the five vehicles that I'm gonna need them for. But with Moho taken care of, the last planet I need to worry about now is gonna be Eve. Now the reason I saved this one is that Eve has a massive atmosphere, which makes rockets really inefficient. In fact, here, you can see me starting out by putting down one of these big rockets that I was using before and cheating myself over to Eve's surface and trying this out, even this isn't even able to get itself off the ground. So to give myself a fighting chance here, I started out by adding on some of these Separatrons, which have some of the highest thrust to weight ratios in the game. You can see on Kerbin, these things get me up to a ridiculous speed really quickly, and so I was hoping I'd at least get something here on Eve. And trying it out, I was able to get off the ground, which was a good start, but it's nowhere near as a 
effective as it was on Kerbin. And before you even get to 300 meters per second, they ended up running out. So an idea I had here was stacking some of these engine plates on each other and adding varying amounts of these separatrons to get myself in the air. Now the higher I go, the thinner the atmosphere will get, which means that they'll get more and more efficient. So as long as I can punch through the lower layers of the atmosphere, I should at least have a fighting chance to get myself up and into orbit. And this plan kind of seemed to work here. I was able to keep myself going, but stability was a bit of a problem with these huge plates, and the atmosphere ended up just completely stopping me. So seeing that, I had another idea, although to make this work, I was gonna need to start with a normal rocket. You can see here I got my big booster in the middle, and I'm attaching four on the sides. And after that, I headed on a smaller stage on top, and with that done, you can see me adding on some more decouplers. On these though, instead of adding boosters, I added on some strut pieces, and on that, I finally added on some motors. My goal with this design was to make some sort of helicopter to pull me up through the thick parts of the atmosphere, and then launch off my engines once I'm out of that really thick suit. Now, I've never tried this before seriously on EVE, so I didn't know if this was really going to be a viable strategy, but if it worked, I figured it'd be a really easy way to save on a massive amount of fuel, and especially since I'm limited to these solid rocket fuel boosters, I was really banking on this solution to work. And once I added on some solar panels to fuel those motors, I wanted to cheat this over to EVE and see how it would do. Uh, at first, it didn't really want to copy over the way that I wanted, so instead, you can see me trying this out on Kerbin, and spinning up these motors here, it wasn't quite able to get me off the ground. Considering that E's gravity is higher than Kerbin's, that wasn't a great sign, but trying out the middle stages, these seem to at least work fine. Now to solve that thrust issue, I wanted to add another set of motors to each one of these arms and see if that would help. And with this, you can see I'm actually able to get off the launch pad here, and I just started going up higher into the atmosphere. Unfortunately though, at some point, I lost a lot of stability and I started to spin out. That was a little confusing to me, but I thought the problem may have been happening because I didn't have enough batteries to smooth out when the solar panels weren't getting enough light, and so trying this out again, it seemed to do even worse this time. I was really confused why there was such a lack of stability here, and after a while, I ended up lowering down the propellers to give myself a better chance. And sure enough, this actually did seem to do a lot better, and I'm not quite sure why. I figured that having the propellers pull up the rocket would be better than having them push up the rocket, but I think there's some weird arrow effects going on here that make this actually do a lot better. Now with this design, you can see I was able to get up to 7,500 meters before eventually things got a little bit weird here, but I thought that may have been due to lack of atmosphere, so I wanted to move this over to EVE and see how I would do. And you can see here, once I cheated myself over, I'm starting to move up through the atmosphere, and the solar panels immediately got ripped off due to the arrow forces. That wasn't really going to be helpful here, and unfortunately that caused a lot of other issues. So one thing I did is I lowered down the arms, and I also turned on infinite electricity so I could at least test the stability of the device before I worried about the solar panels. Now, unfortunately, that didn't really seem to get me very far though, and I ended up turning over around 2,500 meters. So I added on some fins here to maybe stabilize me a little bit, and you can see I also raised up the propellers. Now it was looking very dicey for a while, but once I got up high enough again, the atmosphere thinned out and I was able to get some more stability. This design was working really well, and I ended up getting to around 14,000 meters before I had to fire off my engines. This alone was going to make a gigantic difference to the efficiency of my engines, and I could see I was generating a decent amount of thrust already. I had some other stability issues here, so I added on some fins, and launching out the propellers, I was doing quite a bit better. Now, of course, I'm kind of cheating this whole time, though, by giving myself infinite electricity, so to deal with that, I added on some fixed solar panels, and these shouldn't fall off like the other ones. Now, eventually, though, I was running out of space to put these, and I realized that I could put them on the propeller blades themselves. It makes them spin a little bit slower, but I'm still able to generate some thrust, and you can see going up, it ends up performing about the same. But you can see here, once I got to around 10,000 meters, I wanted to try firing off my main engines and see how far I could get. And starting out, it was looking really good, and already by my second stage, I was well out of the atmosphere, and my third stage just barely was able to get myself off the ground. And what I wanted to worry about next was a way to get this rocket on the surface of EVE to begin with. Now there's basically no way I'm getting these big arms into orbit, so what I decided to do was attach them to hinges, and you can see here I can fold them up, and this makes it a lot easier to get this thing on the ground. Now, of course, another thing to do here is add on some parachutes, and I'm adding on some decouplers so that I can attach all these parachutes to. Now because of the thick atmosphere, it may be one of the only 
redeeming qualities of Eve that it's very easy to land on. As long as you have enough heat shields and parachutes, it shouldn't end up being too bad. Now, once I got all those in place, the final step is to hold this entire thing in a fairing, and this will let me get it up into orbit. Now, to test this out, I added on another engine plate to the bottom of this, and strapped on a lot of these huge boosters. Now, with this design, you can see me trying this out on the launch pad here, and while the propellers didn't really seem to react very kindly to all of this, I think it ended up just being some bracing issues for the most part. Now, what I really wanted to focus on here was deploying that fairing and using one of these boosters to de-orbit myself from Eve. Now, to prepare for this here, you can see me starting up some of these heat shields, and I tried to teleport myself down into the atmosphere, although I ended up getting a little too low on my first try here, and it may have been a little too much force all at once. So, I tried this again here with a much more gradual descent, and this time, while it sort of was working, I had a bunch of propellers exploding on me since they weren't protected by the heat shields very well. And that already is kind of a fail, since if I don't have my propellers, I'm not really going to be getting up off the ground. But another issue is that once I tried launching off my heat shields, they clipped into the rest of the rocket, and that set off a lot of chain reactions of things blowing up. This was kind of just turning into a huge mess here, so I decided to move around my fairing so that I could actually keep it intact as I fall through the atmosphere. This should protect the propeller blades as I'm coming down, although unfortunately it was a little too aerodynamic, and you can see that I ended up falling down sideways. Now the only reason this isn't exploding is because I turned off max heating for parts, so under any other circumstance this would be a complete fail. I was realizing that getting this huge rocket down might just not be feasible, and before I got in too deep, I wanted to make sure that my hinge system was gonna work to begin with. I never actually verified that deploying these hinges would work the way I wanted, and sure enough, they weren't really strong enough to hold everything together. For some reason, I thought they were going to be totally rigid, but that's just not how things work in this game, and you can see that they all immediately want to bend over to the side. This causes a lot of explosions, and so this design just didn't really seem to want to work. I think fundamentally it was a good design, but I wanted to trim down on weight as much as possible, and I also wanted to move my propellers to a much better spot. And you can see there, I ended up stacking some on top of my control pod, and I'm trying to trim down the weight of the rocket as much as possible. Now with this, it's much smaller here, and the propellers still seem to be doing a good job to get me up off the ground. I realized I'd get up to around 25,000 meters before I had to launch off my rockets. I was lacking a little bit of stability at first, but with some extra fins, I wanted to give this another shot here, and already it was looking pretty decent. Now with just the three stages that I had, while it wasn't quite getting into orbit, I wasn't really that far away either, and I figured that one extra stage on the rocket should do the trick. Now unfortunately, Unfortunately, this was going to add quite a bit of weight here, and giving this a shot on Kerbin, it wasn't quite able to lift it off the ground once again. But really all I had to do was switch out my double motor mount to a quad motor mount, and once again it was getting off the ground just like before. This ended up just being a much better design overall, and you can see I could launch off that bottom stage here and start building up my speed. Uh, one unfortunate thing is I tried to save some weight by getting rid of the command pod and just adding a Kerbal and a seat, but doing this meant that the Kerbal got exposed to a little too much heat. And and kind of ended up just exploding. So I added on a protective nose cone to try to prevent that here, and although we're not really that well situated inside the nose cone, I was hoping it was going to be enough, and sure enough, it ended up doing the trick. I can see here with one stage to go, I had a pretty decent trajectory, so I warped over there, and launching this off now, finally here I was able to get myself into a good orbit around EVE, and I felt really good about this design. An important factor here is if I can get the Kerbal out of this, but sure enough, even though that nose cone is in inside the Kerbal, I didn't have any problem teleporting out, so with that looking good, now I just need to get my re-entry system done once again. Now considering that this was so much smaller than the other one though, I figured I could make this a lot easier, and by throwing down some decouplers in the bottom and also some heat shields, I wanted to see if this would be enough to work. And descending into the atmosphere, while it was getting very hot, and while the propellers were taking a decent amount of that force, none of them seemed to explode, which was a really good sign. And a little while later here, you can see my parachute safely brought me down to the ground, and at this point, it seemed like everything was gonna work. So with Eve finally taken care of here, I would just have to make landers for all of the other four planets. Now with the exception of Duna, I am gonna have a new challenge with these other planets, and you can see here, I actually wanted to start off with Moho. Now what I'm doing is adding on some legs, and I'm using some decouplers to attach them. On one of these decouplers, you can see me adding on a lot of these Separatron rockets, and these are gonna be for fine control. Now I also added on some 
some big boosters to slow me down here, and you can see once I get around Moho, I'm firing them off now to get myself onto a collision course. Now, what I meant by those Separatrons being for fine control, as you can see here, after I launch off my big boosters there, I could launch off the Separatrons and actually just slow myself down a little bit. The plan is gonna be to get myself near the ground, fire those off at just the right time, get myself to stop right above the ground, and then throw away those small boosters. Now, while I didn't quite execute that perfectly there, at least in theory, this should work fine. So seeing that, I wanted to add a similar system to my Dreslander now. I can see overall, this is very, very similar, although this time I'm using some smaller landing legs. I'm actually gonna use the Separatrons as my main stage to get myself to slow down. I'm not gonna be orbiting that fast, and the rocket's so light that I can pretty much just get away with these Separatrons. Now once again here, I didn't quite get this to work the way that I wanted, it ended up smashing into the surface. But again, in theory, this should work, so it was okay to move on here to my final lander. Now for the Duna lander here, I actually can get away with the heat shield and some parachutes since there is a thin atmosphere. Now I was a little concerned that the atmosphere wasn't going to be thick enough for parachutes to alone do the trick, but I figured I might as well give it a shot here because it would be pretty convenient if it would work. So in orbit here, you see I deployed that heat shield, and while I was trying to burn away, I noticed it was interfering with the thrust from my rocket. So I ended up deciding to get rid of the heat shield, and I was really hoping that without a heat shield, I would be able to slow myself down. Now, fortunately here, it seemed to work fine. The atmosphere is thin enough, I was able to slow down without exploding, and getting near the surface here, the parachutes also seemed to work, and I was able to touch down. So now, with all the landers done as well, I wanted to start assembling this into one big rocket. So to get started on that, you can see that above my EVE lander, I decided to attach a motor, and I'm putting down an engine plate above that. Now, the reason I'm using a motor there is I had a kind of cool idea for what I want to try to do with these landers. Now, another thing you'll notice is I didn't end up making a separate lander for ELU. That was because the takeoff vehicles were so similar between ELU and MOHO, I decided to just make them the same vehicle so I don't have to keep track of two different things. So I ended up just copying over that lander, and now I have all four of those landers on top. And with that done, now I have all the prep goals for the mission complete. Now for fun here, I slapped on some extra boosters at the bottom of this to see how far up it could get, but if you guys want to see the full mission, make sure you stay tuned for that video soon. I don't normally love splitting up videos like this, but seeing how much work is already going to the preparation, I didn't want to have to cut out way too much from the final video if I wanted to crush it all into one. So if you want to see part two, make sure to subscribe. If you have any other ideas or improvements I could make before I start the main mission, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. But otherwise, till next time.